Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Kenna. So on June 13th, I was officially diagnosed with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And I am kind of gonna be talking about my diagnosis process and how I got to this point, I guess. <laughs> I've shared some of it, but then I chose not to share the rest of it until like i knew for sure what was going on because i knew after the first appointment after like my notes came in from the appointment that i realized like i fully didn't understand everything that was going on so i just chose to wait until i knew what was going on um to share everything so yeah that's just kind of going to be what this video is i kind of just want to be open about the diagnosis process and hopefully that it helps some people understand as well and if you are going through something similar it might help but a little background if you're new here is i was diagnosed first with gastroparesis in april of 2019 after so many issues <laughs> so many gi issues and i was diagnosed with a gastric emptying scan and i've had like three i think in total and they all showed gastroparesis and the smart pill ones also showed gastroparesis and yeah, I also have slow intestinal motility and then I was diagnosed with POTS. I honestly can't remember. I think it's September of last year. I honestly don't remember. But we were kind of always wondering where these health issues came from because they kind of just popped up out of nowhere. Well, it seemingly they popped out of nowhere, but more so they got worse out of nowhere. And I've kind of always had certain issues in my life. But I've kind of just avoided it for so long and just kind of accepted things as they were um but then after multiple people have suggested hds i decided to look into a geneticist so i found a local geneticist called them up and made an appointment and i'm thankful because it seems like a lot of people have to have a, like have a really long wait time for geneticists and i think i waited like two months for my first appointment the first appointment is what you all know about so when i went in for my first geneticist appointment I found a geneticist that was knowledgeable in connective tissue disorders, like all connective tissue disorders. So that way, like, I knew I was going to get the best care and the most knowledgeable care and the most accurate care, which was what was important to me. The first appointment, just to summarize again, she went through the criteria, went through family history, etc. She did it super smoothly and like, like she knew what she was doing. It was just effortless. So like, I couldn't even keep up with what she was doing because she was just doing it so effortlessly. And then what she verbally said to me at the appointment was, you didn't meet all the criteria, we're gonna do genetic testing. Then we did like connective tissue genetic testing and that came back negative. For other types of connective tissue disorders, I do have some like random gene mutation that they don't know yet or if it's even an issue. So that's kind of just like, doesn't even exist. Um, and then after that, we did a more expansive testing. I honestly don't know exactly everything that they tested, but it's kind of just looking at my whole genes. And that also was good. That was what she did after the fact. But after that initial appointment, like later that evening, like the notes came in, I think around like five or six, I read my notes from the appointment because I was curious. And then I saw that the criteria oh the criteria that i'm referencing is i don't i don't know what year it is but it's just like if you look up hypermobile like eds criteria this is the criteria that i'm referencing so in the notes she stated patient meets criteria one and two of hds to rule out criteria three do genetic testing something along those lines so then i read that and i was like wait so like what's criteria three and i looked up criteria three and it's basically just like ruling out everything else before you land on the diagnosis of atds so i was like oh crap like does this mean that i could still have it if my genetic testing was negative and that's when i kind of realized i was like oh wait like i don't know maybe i guess i still have the chance of having it but i was so confused at the time and i had no idea so like i didn't want to say anything and i was just like you know what i'll just wait until it's all said and done until i share about it because it very well could also be negative something else so i'm like you know what i'll just i'll just wait until everything's said and done to expand further so i knew since february that it was still a possibility but i also like i said i didn't ask my geneticist i just kind of let her do what she needed to do before asking that question and then also i i feel like i also didn't want to acknowledge it because i'm like you know what maybe if i don't think about it it won't exist you know we all know that that's not how it works but that's that's how i think it works long story short we did all the genetic testing and it was all like good 
thank goodness like i was so happy and then after all my genetic testing came back i asked and i was i asked my geneticist about like the note and then she's like well i first asked like someone in her office because you can't get a hold of like the geneticist directly and then on may 13th they called me and were like hey you now meet the criteria for heds we're gonna call to set you up an appointment with the geneticist so we can get it all documented and everything and i was like um okay uh i was not expecting that at all like not at all like just casually calling up me up on a friday at like 3 p.m to tell me i have hds and they're like we'll call you on monday to schedule your appointment and i'm like what yeah so then the following monday they called me and they set up my appointment and it was initially for the end of august like i think like august 24th or something and i was like you're kidding me like which actually you know now i don't want to complain because i know people have to wait a lot longer but it was at the time for me it was a little bit stressful because they just called me up with this diagnosis and then we're like okay we'll see you in three months and for me personally i need to have a diagnosis written down in paper otherwise i will convince myself that i like made up what they were saying i, I was in a conundrum because i was like do i say that i have a do i do i have i'm like i don't even know if i have it even though like she literally said said it and my fiance was there with the phone call like he heard it and he's like hey like she said it i'm like no no she did it and then one day i had this gut feeling to call the geneticist and see if they had any cancellation appointments like i don't know i'm like uh hey like i just want to make sure like i'm on the wait list and i want to know if like you have any new appointments opening up or anything and then they told me like oh like no but we'll definitely let you know like if we do and then literally like 20 minutes later they're calling me and they're like we have a cancellation appointment and it's in like four days can you make it i'm like Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm like, yes, yes. And then June 13th rolls around. So this is actually two days ago. Yeah, because it's the 15th when I'm filming this, but I don't think you'll see it for a while, this video. And then June 13th rolls around and then I have the virtual visit with my geneticist and she comes on and she's, she's so sweet. I love my geneticist. And then basically like she was just saying, yep, now that we ruled everything out, your genetic test looks good. You like now meet the criteria for HEDS. And we literally just went through it. She had the sheet printed out and she went through it again um, just to be sure and just to make sure that I had like, she could put like the actual like criteria like in my chart and stuff too yeah and then after that we kind of just talked about a few things so she because the geneticist basically just helps you with your diagnosis and then you have to see the other specialties to help with like what your genetic condition causes so for me like ATDS causes GI issues I see my GI doctor and then she wanted to make sure that I was following up with a cardiologist which I actually do have an appointment with a new cardiologist. So, I mean, I feel like if you're a long time subscriber on this channel, you know that my last cardiologist was not the best and I just have not been back to one because I've just been so like afraid to find a new cardiologist because I just did not have a good time. But I finally made an appointment and I see one in like three months because that was the wait time for the cardiologist as well so yeah she's just like make sure you see a cardiologist also she's referring me to a physical medicine specialty clinic thing i don't i'm actually not too familiar with it i have not heard anything from them yet i'm guessing it's because it has to go through insurance and all of that jazz and then they'll have to call and schedule me but from my understanding is it's like physical therapy but like they can do a couple more things so she's sending me to a place that is more familiar with hypermobile joints and everything. She said they have experience working with them so they know, which I'm really thankful for because I know or I've heard, I feel like some people have gone to physical therapy where they're not familiar with hypermobile joints and it's not a good time. So I'm happy that she knows of a place. Basically it's like physical therapy, but they also can handle like pain management and stuff like that too, if needed which is really nice. I'm glad it's all like in one area. So that I'm looking forward to. When it comes to physical medicine, I have to remember that it's important to treat things before they get bad um, because I do have joint pain. Like what I see a lot when it comes to EDS, which I know is a huge part of it for a ton of people, but is like frequent dislocations, which I personally do not have. So I'm like, oh, I don't need physical therapy or anything. But the thing is we want to do physical therapy and help before I get to that point. Like. I am lucky that I was diagnosed before I got to that point so I need to make sure like I take care of my body as much as I can now so that my joints are 
as great as they can be. For me personally, I think my EDS affects me most significantly in my GI tract. I feel like EDS is so different in every single person. I feel like it affects them like significantly in certain areas, but not so much in others. And for me, it's like my GI tract. I feel like I'm still processing the diagnosis in a way. I spent so long trying to convince myself that I don't have it. And it's still so weird to say, like, I don't know, I just feel weird saying it, but I am overall just relieved that I have answers and explanations for a lot of things. I feel like a lot of people saw it before I chose to <laughs> acknowledge it. Um, if it wasn't for people like telling me I should get checked out, I don't know if I ever would. Um, and it took a, lo a long time for people telling me I should get checked out before I actually got checked out. Um, but it's just nice to put a name on things and it is, it like, it's just, it makes sense. Like, that's the biggest thing. I'm like, oh, so that's why I like my skin like rips off when with a simple band-aid or things like I bruise easily or my joints and my GI tract and my pots and like everything. Like it all, it all makes sense. Overall, I'm excited and nervous. I think the biggest thing that I have been struggling and trying to push away is the fact that my GI tract may never return to where it used to be. I'm still holding out hope. Like there's always room for like improvement and more management and medication to come out like there's always room for that so I'm still definitely holding out hope that I'll be able to eat again and not need a feeding tube I'm just still thankful that I can eat two to three small snacks a day like I'm just so thankful that I can do that and it gives me hope that maybe one day I can eat more and get off my tube but the part that's been scary is like I really don't know what my future holds at this point but I mean no one does no one does with anything so the biggest thing I'm just struggling with I feel like is oh my gosh my GI tract may never return to its original function are my joints going to hurt worse is my pot gonna get worse like I don't, I don't know so those are the biggest things but overall I'm just thankful for answers and I try not to think too much about the future because like I said no one really knows anything about the future you can only live in the present right now and just take things one step at a time and go from there so just trying not to get in my head with all those what ifs i hope that explained everything pretty well if you have any questions definitely let me know but i feel like to summarize if you're curious i was diagnosed with HEDS by my geneticist through the criteria and ruling out all genetic causes, gastroparesis through a gastric emptying scan, slow intestinal motility through a smart pill and sits marker test, and POTS through a tilt table. Oh, and I have pelvic floor dysfunction as well, which was diagnosed through an anal rectal manometry. And I'm in pelvic floor PT for that. So that's a summarize of how I was diagnosed with like HEDS and its comorbidities. Oh my god, I said that's so weird. Comorbid comorbidities yeah i think that's everything i don't know i feel like i i'm all over the place i kind of just like i didn't have any plan i kind of just sat down and talked about it but if you have any questions or are curious or just anything please let me know but thank you so much for watching just thank you so much for being here and getting me to like advocate for myself and actually like seek medical attention for these certain things because if it wasn't for like certain people in my life i definitely wouldn't i would just kind of sit here and wait until something bad happens <laughs> um to actually get help so i'm just thankful for everyone i'm interested to see where my life takes me from here okay that's all i have to say oh maybe leave comments down below of like what has helped you with these conditions or anything um so we can all kind of help each other with that yeah okay that's all i have to say i hope to see you in my next video bye I just wish they also feel